All right, here's the setup for the impulse momentum investigation using the vernier uh, force sensor and the motion detector. Um, the force sensor is set up at plus or minus 10 range. It has this little, what I call a white hoop on it. Um, it's connected to the LabQuest Mini at channel one. The motion detector is set up so that it works for carts. I have this just sort of lined up here. Uh, and it's connected to Digital One. My LabQuest Mini is connected to my computer. And I just open up Logger Pro and it's just automatically recognized um, that there's a force probe along with a motion detector. So it gave me a position time graph. I've got this, my gray cart with um, an extra deflector so that it can pick up the motion detector. So the motion detector can pick it up a little easier. So all I'm basically going to do is give this cart a little push. It's going to move and go against this. This spring, is go this hoop is going to compress and there's a force applied or an impulse applied to the cart which will slow it to a stop and then the impulse will continue um, changing the direction of the cart and having it go in the other direction. So during the time period there'll be a force applied during a time. You see how this is, you know, not, it doesn't take too much force to move this. Um, so it's going to be a pretty long time interval of contact. So the force is going to be distributed through the entire time and that's how we're going to get our impulse. Okay, so here's my setup. I want to make sure that I zero the, zero the probe, the force probe in the orientation, so it's sideways. Force probe sideways, so I want to make sure it's zeroed there, sideways. So um, I'm going to zero the motion detector so that the zero position is here at the detector and go ahead and hit, move that about uh, 15, 20 centimeters apart because it doesn't like to pick it up very well. So what I'm going to do is basically, again, give this thing a quick shove. It's going to interact with the hoop. There's going to be an impulse applied. There's going to be an incoming momentum for the cart, mass times velocity, and after the impulse is applied, there's going to be a final momentum for the cart. The impulse applied by the hoop here should be equal to the change in momentum for the cart. So we're going to find out, see how well that works. So I don't think I can get all three things in the screen at the same time. I'm going to try my best here. So I'm just going to hit collect, give this a little push. And back it goes. And now I look at my my plot, and there's my force. It's okay. Uh, my position graph here uh, looks like my position didn't really zero very well, and my velocity looks ridiculous, which is okay. I'm just going to change it to relative numbers because it lost uh, the detector. I'm almost tempted of trying this again. This is not a very good trial, so I'm going to try it one more time. Which is okay. This is going to happen every once in a while. I'm going to go ahead and hit collect, give it a quick shove, Boop. Okay, and that looks a little better. Okay, so I can see here's where my impulse was applied. Cart is moving here, this section, uh, slows to a st stop. Here, here's the interaction between these two points, is the interaction where the spring started to, the hoop started to act, slowed the cart to a stop, and then sped it up. So I'm going to go and aim directly into the. Um, video program to analyze this graph a little better. All right, here we go. We're looking at the uh, Logger Pro data that we just um, created. I want to look also at what we're going to have to calculate. All right, so here's my impulse momentum document. I'm going to need to document my cart mass, which was 0 0.297 kilograms. Um, I'm going to need to compare the impulse acted on the cart by the hoop to the change in momentum of the cart. So impulse momentum theorem. The impulse of the hoop on the cart should equal to the change in momentum on the cart. So I need to find a change in momentum. I need mass times change in velocity. So here's where I'm going to find the final initial velocity to find my change. Multiply that change in velocity by the mass to put down here and change in momentum. So if you notice, this is two-part table that you need to complete all the way through for each section. 
Um, and for the impulse, the second half, force multiplied by time gets you impulse. And we'll look at two different ways of getting that impulse. And then we'll put the impulse down here and compare these two numbers. The impulse um, of the hoop should equal to the change in momentum of the car. Um, the, so these numbers should be very close to each other. I expect somewhere between 5 to 20 percent error. A lot of that depends upon, not really error, it's, it, there's a little bit of friction involved with um, the carts moving, the hoop attachment with the um, with the bracket may move just a little bit, um, and then there's just relative things. So we're going to look at a, a white hoop trial, and then you're going to uh, also do um, for the black hoop, which will have a different impulse because it has a different force, a different spring constant in a sense, and then also a a um, interaction where the objects stop and stick. So that's where we use clay. Um, so that's going to be an interesting one to look at. And then there's a couple of questions to look at. Uh, let's get rid of this because I did a trial here. Let's redo this. Well, let's just leave it this here. Okay. Um, back to the data. So we need to get uh, final velocity, initial velocity, force, and time. So here's um, the data we had before. It's not too bad. There's a couple places over here that I'm not very happy with, but it really doesn't matter. The main place that I need to look at is right in here. This is the interaction between the cart and the hoop, where the hoop was giving a force to change the momentum of the cart. So I want to change my axes of values so I can see this a little better. Um, oops, I'll make that one. And possibly, how about negative two? Uh, look at this one also. Just not going to use the position graph. But just won't look at it once. <clears throat> and then for my velocity graph, I'm going to change that to how about 0.7 and negative 0.7. All right. <clears throat> so for final velocity, initial velocity from down here, here's a cart going at a constant speed. Why? Well, I pushed it. I didn't think my hand got in the way. And then it moves at a constant speed. And here's where it starts interacting with the cart. There's the force of the car starting to act. Uh, the car slows down to a stop. Notice when the velocity is zero, the force is at a maximum up here. And then the, the cart takes off in the opposite direction. And about somewhere around here, the, the, the force of the hoop no longer acts on the cart. Um, this is just the, the hoop, I guess, just uh, vibrating, resonating back and forth. <clears throat> um, if I'm looking at the position graph, you'll notice that this section has a constant velocity, a uh, constant slope, so it's constant velocity. That's pretty constant. And then down here, there's another section of uh, constant slope, kind of constant velocity. So but this is the one I really want to look at. So I'm going back here trying to highlight only the region where the force was acting. So I have to be really careful while I do this. Um, so to get my initial velocities just here before the um, the shading. So if I look down at the left-hand corner, I can kind of read the values if I put my, my little cursor over the mouse. So for this, it's close enough. If you just sort of, boom, look there, it looks like 0.41 for initial. And then for final, somewhere down here, negative 0.40. And just read those numbers. But I'm going to use this to chart and look at what I've got highlighted. So there's my force. If I move this over a little bit, so it looks like my velocity just before the shading is 0.48, and just after the shading is 0 .40, uh, 0.405. Let me see. I want to look at this. I don't like that this seems there's a number of points. Looks like it's decreasing. I think I should go one more. If I look really carefully at that, I probably should go one more. If I can see the force is still acting in here is where it's kind of starting to um, starting to change. So either one of these two values, I will just go with 0 0.41, 0 0.405, and 0 0.418, 0 0.405, and 0 0.418, 0 0.405. Let's see, so point. Oh no, 418 was the initial. And then the final was negative 0.405.
to find the change in velocity, I want to take the difference between those two. Okay, so the difference between those two will be uh, point negative final minus initial, negative 405 minus 0.418, which would be negative 0.823. Now, I want to show that calculation down here. Um, change in momentum, m delta v, uh, so 0.297 kilograms times my um, change in velocity, negative 0 0.823, 0 0.297 times 0 0.823 comes out to 0 0.244 um, kilogram meters per second. Now, next part, I want to find the average force, time, and impulse. We're going to look at this in a couple different ways. Uh, so if I go back to my plot, um, from this that's highlighted, I'm going to want to look at the force graph and hit the statistics button. And doing that gives me the, the average value um, and the number of samples, 0 0.7707. So basically, my average force was negative 0.771. 0.771, 0 0.771, so negative 0.771. Now to get my time interval, <coughs> um, I'm going to look at the chart over here and just see the time. The shading begins at 2.3 seconds. The shading ends at 2.62 seconds, so that's 0.32 seconds, that difference in time. So that's basically my my time interval. So 0 0.32, 0.32 seconds. Multiply those together. 0 0.771 times 0 0.32, 0 0.246, 0 0.246 with a negative sign. And oops, I didn't copy that. Negative 0.246 for my impulse. My change of momentum was, oh my goodness, negative 0.244. And now I want to find the percent difference. But before I do that, I want to go back and look at another way to get impulse. Um, when we're multiplying force, the y-axis, multiplied by the width, you notice that this, the shaded region, you can, you're almost finding an area in between here. Um, for each force multiplied by time, each force multiplied by time, you make little rectangles in this region. This is what you're doing calculus. And that's known as an integral. So this button does the area, and I don't need it for these other ones. So you can see that that number is pretty much the same, 0.26. It'll be, it should be very, very close. A lot has to deal with how much time and how wide these are. I think the time difference was a little different there. Um, but those should be pretty, pretty, pretty close. Either one you could use. Um, let's go back here to... This now to find the percent difference <clears throat> between the two values. See, that was like what, negative 0.26, so it's still pretty close. Um, down here, percent difference is used when you don't know which of these two values is the correct one. We have two experimental values. We want to look at how different they are from each other. So the formula for percent difference is essentially the difference. Divided by the average times 100. So the difference between the two numbers will be negative 0.246 minus minus 0.244. We got Newton seconds for units. Oops. <clears throat> divided by the average, which would be minus 0.246 plus minus 0.244 parenthesis divided by 2. I'm going to get an extra parenthesis in here. <clears throat> oh, forgot my units. Newton seconds times 100. And that comes out to... Um, let's move all this to another line. Uh, negative 0.02 divided by negative 0.245 times 100 and that's going to be really low 0.02 
divided by 0.245 times 100 is 0.0. Not right, because it's really 0.002. No, it's too, too small, too big of a number. And that comes out to 0.8%. Um, again, I don't expect all the data to be this good. You know, uh, I think I just got lucky in the values I used. Um, percent difference, 0.8 percent. All right, well, that's it. Um, go on to the rest of the trials. Um, uh, the, the, the black hoop will be a little different um, because the forces will be greater. It's, I think it's a stiffer, stiffer hoop. Um, the clay will cause some absorption to occur, and um, the cart will actually go to a stop. So that would be a little different type of collision. But in each of these cases, you're going to be looking at how impulse and change momentum uh, compare to each other. All right, that's it. Thanks. Have a great day. And good luck finishing this investigation.